W1VLF. Hey everybody, W1VLF here. My name is Paul and welcome back to the part three of the WWVB antenna build right here on the Group W bench. Okay, so last week, was it last week? I think it was. Um, we did a lot of the, the work on the core of the antenna. Um, we, want, we, we put the ferrites inside, glued them all in place, got nice and solid. Um, wow, did you see that? It just touched my face. We're not supposed to do that anymore. Try not to. Bad example. Anyway, so we glued up the cores, we went out to the lathe, we wound our 800 turns on here, we got our 15 millihenries, and we calculated by the uh, online calculator that to resonate this antenna we'd need something, somewhere around 500 picofarads. Um, we also wound 10 turns here, um, which is our, our, I guess, exciter coil or extraction coil. Once we resonate this and there's a large field built around it, we need to pull some of this off and be able to deliver that, not really match it all that much, but deliver that to the, uh, to the H, uh, HF Discovery. So today what we're going to do is we have to resonate this. Now by calculation we know we're going to be roughly around 500 picofarads. So <clears throat> what I have here is this, uh, and all this is is just a couple terminal blocks here to uh, so I can connect wires to this because I use this for all sorts of things. Uh, 17 picofarads open, 712 picofarads closed. So we know that this is going to get us in the ballpark. But the question is, yeah, that's what the calculator says. It says about 500 picofarads. How do I really know it's working? Well, you could do that a couple of ways. One, you could excite it with a little bit of energy from a, a signal generator that you knew was on 60 kilohertz in a loop just put this in the area and try to tune this for resonance that's one way if you're reasonably close and I'm 1800 miles away from um, WWVB um, you can point this to the to the west almost directly west for me and watch the signal level and tune around um, but there's another way and we're going to do that one. Um, we're going to use a laptop, and we're <laughs> noise is not your friend, right? Noise is the enemy of, of amateur radio and SWLs. But in this case, noise is our friend. We're going to use the noise that comes out of the laptop from all the microprocessors and power supplies and all that junk that's going on in there. And we're going to use that to see when we're tuned to 60 cycles resonance. Now we won't be able to see the actual 60 kilohertz signal from Boulder, Colorado um, when the laptop is out here. And I'm going to set this up, I'll show you, right? Um, I'm going to set this all up uh, and we're going, to, we're going to do this and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tune the uh, variable capacitor. And once you tune this, then you know, well, I'm going to measure the capacitance. And once I do that, I'll say, okay, it's 520 picofarads. All right, I'll grab one silver mica capacitor that's 500 and I'll use the same technique uh, with the laptop to find out where it's tuned uh, I may not go through this but this would be how you did it and then you'd say well I'm still a little high or low I need to take away or add capacitance to the resonating circuit by the way we're gonna put it in this uh, this tube we'll do that a little bit of hot glue and whatnot but before you seal something like this up you want to make sure you're testing it in stages because once you use the PVC cement on this thing, you're just not getting it apart. So let me, uh, let me get the laptop fired up here on the Group W bench. And, um, and I'll show you how you can tell where this thing is resonant. Um, I think I'll try to put a link in the uh, picture here to the previous versions of, of this or the previous segments of this video. But there's also another video on how to find a resonant frequency of your loop. That you've built. I just built a loop and uh, it's sort of like what I saw online and uh, I'm not 100% sure if it works or not. Well that that other video shows you how you can do that and that same technique is, is going to be used here. Now someone commented well I don't have a, a signal generator or um, this, the oscilloscope but you do have the SDR, you do have an HF uh, either AirSpy or HF Plus 
And when you tune to 60 kilohertz, you know you're on 60 kilohertz. So you essentially have a frequency counter, a spectrum analyzer, an oscilloscope, everything all in one in that one little box. So now all you need is a noise source or a generator, RF generator. But uh, so you don't have an RF generator? Well, this is a way to tune it to get you in, into the ballpark. So let me set up, okay? And I'll be back. Here's, a, here's all, all that we have. We have our, our AirSpy Discovery. It's pretty light. A uh, single cable going in, obviously, the USB cable. We have this cable, which is uh, just a BNC to some connections so that I can hook to the loop. So we'll connect that. Connect that up. And we have to make two more connections here. The resonating part goes of the loop goes to uh, these two connections, and this is what we're going to grab uh, the signal. We're going to extract the signal off and send it into uh, into the uh, SDR here. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit better so this screen is clearer. Okay, stand by. Okay, real quick, just for just for clarity, you remember when we wound this large coil here. Uh, one wire came off that end, one wire came off this end. I've just taped those right to the coil itself, and then I bring them out. Okay, so these are the ones that we're going to resonate that main coil with. And these other two are where we're going to extract the signal from, and those are our 10 turns in the middle. Okay, so here's the two outer ends of the coil across the capacitor right here. We're gonna, that's where we're going to resonate. And the, um, the exciter coil or the sampling coil is going to go right here. We're going to connect that to the, yes, the uh, air spy. HF. I'm not. Okay. Uh, it's hard to find the mouse here. Okay. Now we're up and running. I'm going to move the camera up. So you're going to kind of have to take my word for um, what I'm what I'm adjusting here. Let me get in a little bit closer. Sorry about that. Not the most professional. All right, we're going to grab a hold of this receiver here, and we're going to start it. And as you can see, okay, maybe you can't see, but I'm going to move this loop closer to the laptop. And you can see that here's, here's the loop right here. And you can't really see it, but you can see the noise gets much, much stronger. And it's broadband. Here's, you know, this is 115 kilohertz, and that's something like 5 kilohertz. So we have this very broadband noise source coming out of this laptop, which is something that we hate. But in this case, we're going to be able to use it. So I'm going to move the loop back over here where it's out of the way and I, and I can, tune, can tune the laptop, I mean the, uh, the capacitor. So right away, I'm guessing that this is the peak of the antenna. And I'm going to move that around. So, by the way, I am tuned to 60 kilohertz. This is the one thing that you can depend on. You can't depend on the propagation. You can't depend on the fact that you have exactly 15 millihenries. You can't depend on the fact that you have exactly 520 picofarads. So with all those variables, this is the one standard that you're going to work with. So this is 60 kilohertz here in the middle. So as, as I tune this capacitor, I wish you could see that, um, that I'm tuning it, but you can see the results on the screen. Um, so as I take away capacitance, uh, I'm up at 80 kilohertz right now. Uh, that's 100 kilohertz, uh, 115. So somewhere, let's let me let me uh, narrow it up a little bit. See how far up, how far that really goes. Okay, so I'm up at 115 kilohertz there. 
and actually, uh, let's see. Ah, this is embarrassing. Okay, well, I'll go up in frequency a little bit here. Let's go, and we'll center that back up. Okay, so there's there's 150, 110 kilohertz, um, 130, 145, and I'm almost at the end. So about 200 kilohertz. So we with this antenna, we can change from 200 kilohertz to a little below 60 um, by using that uh, capacitance between 17 picofarads and 712 picofarads. All right, so let's go back to uh, 60 cycle or 60 kilohertz here. All right, and we'll put that back in the center. Or actually, we'll zoom out first, I guess. All right, so 60 kilohertz is in the center, and you don't see any real noise spike there uh, because we're still tuned way up at, at 150 kilohertz. So I'm going to start adding capacitance. As you can see, the noise is starting to come up over here. Okay. So here's 60 kilohertz. Whoops, that's 90. My mistake. Okay, so I was at 90. You can see there's no noise there at all at 60. So let me add more capacitance. And as I do, here comes here comes the noise. Okay, getting closer, closer, closer. All right. So there we go. That's the noise floor being raised up by the resonance of this antenna. So you don't need a, an RF generator. You just need a broadband source of noise. Now, if we didn't have the laptop right close here like this, you could use this, believe it or not. I mean, we all curse LED light bulbs and, and their, uh, their noise, but if you didn't have the laptop right close to you, you could turn on this. Of course, I don't have the thing powered up. Um, and, and generate a whole pile of noise which you could do the same thing with. All right, so I'm going to turn this on and we'll see the, uh, the noise floor come up as I put it close. There, there's the noise floor of that LED light bulb and I'll just shut it off. Okay, so you don't have to have the laptop, um, but, it's, but the laptop is a real convenient way um, to, to find the resonance here. So let me... Uh, so it's like it's like S9 right now. We'll move off a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm tuned to. Uh, uh, let me let me close the bandwidth up a little, so it's a little easier to see. There we go. Right back and forth. So I'm gonna. You won't see this, but I'm gonna disconnect this real quick. The capacitor here. I'm gonna run over to the LCR meter. I'm gonna measure it. Okay, 499 picofarads. Let me just pause here real, real quick and see if I can find a silver mica that's in the neighborhood because that's going to be your next step. You, you don't want this hanging out of your antenna. So let me pause and see if I can find one. Well, wow. that's 61 kilohertz. Let me uh, put it at 60. Okay, so as it as it stands, I found a uh, silver mica here, 500 kilo, uh, 500 picofarads, or 510. So I'm going to put that. You can see it's pretty flat through here right now. I'm going to I'm going to attach that to the two wires where the variable capacitor was. Okay, and let's see where that noise spike comes up when I do that. Okay. <laughs> I had it resonated before to um, 661 kilohertz. So when I put this five this 500 in there, it's going to resonate at 61. So you can see just another 30 or 40 picofarads would push it down and get it to be resonant. So the point here is you can get into ballpark with this variable capacitor, um, even if you didn't know what the exact value of this was, of this capacitor was, you could say, well, that's two 365 picofarad sections. Eh, it's almost all the way in. That's about 700, 500, I mean, uh, 500 picofarads. Get your capacitor, attach it to the uh, antenna, 
and you find a noise spike over here. How'd that get down there? All right? I guess what I'm trying to say is, yes, it's nice to have an RF generator, uh, but for these applications, you don't need it if you just use. The one tool you need to have is one of these receivers. Now, let's see. I have the preamp on, too. So there I am at 61 kilohertz. My next step would be to add another 10 or 20 puff, and that would push it down in frequency. Anyway, I think I belabored, be, 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 belabored that enough. Um, the, ne the other thing is, oh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you again what this looks like in the room here as far as signal-to-noise ratio when I have the antenna connected and, and this laptop isn't over here. Uh, when I go back to the hand desk, I'll have this running, and then later on, once it's all boxed up, we're going to put it outside, away from all this noise. See, right now, this is receiving WWVB. Um, but the noise is, is inside here is just way too much. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll box this up, uh, put it in the tube, okay, this. Uh, I'll show you how that's done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same test again to make sure that this thing is resonant once it's in this tube and it's all, you know, all put in place solidly. So anyway, that's the next step. Hey everybody, back over here at the Ham Shack computer. I wanted to just show you something real quick. So if you look on this screen, you can now see WWVB right here although the antenna is not tuned to that frequency it's still tuned to 61 kilohertz over here um, but the laptops out of the way and um, you know the no there's there's not as much local noise there but if I was to put another hundred or so picofarads in I would roll this right down here and WWVB would be where the peak of the where the peak of the signal is for that antenna resonated so I turn I just keyed to it here or I turned the volume up so there's probably another 10 or 15 dB of signal strength once the antenna is resonated just wanted to show you that real quick that um, that the peak is still there now that I'm looking at this rate this antenna with a different um, discovery uh, in the other room and uh, don't have the laptop right on top of it All right, guys, uh, W1VLF here back again with a little bit of disappointing news. I um, <laughs> remember how I said this stuff, ferrite, is really hard and really brittle, and you want to take great care with this. Well, with all the running around and everything, I dropped it. And uh, so it's not it's not dependably 15 millihenries anymore so with it with the antenna in one direction it tunes it's it, you can tune it up if the ferrite moves all of a sudden it's on another frequency you know just slightly above or below but so I pulled the bonehead move here dropped it on the ground so um, I was gonna have this the rest of this uh, done today hopefully you know getting it in the tube and everything but it's not worth doing that so seven bucks or fifteen bucks worth of ferrite in about a couple hours here I'm gonna have to uh, rewind another one out on the lathe but uh, I guess uh, to bring the point home um, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to drop this like that all right anyway I'm gonna build up another one and maybe tomorrow I'll be able to to uh, finish it off for you guys but for now, wah, 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 wah.